Theorem two, it's called corollary to Green's theorem. Suppose the hypotheses of Green's theorem are satisfied, then the, re then the area of the region R, a plane region bounded by C is, well, there's a million different integrals you could write. I'm gonna write the one most common to the books that you'll see, but I'm not, I don't usually use that one. I'll, I'll show you other ones you can get from this one. So the um, area of the region then is equal to, I guess we could use one half integral over C of, here's how it's usually written for one reason or another. It's X, but it, then the differential is dy and then minus y dx. Now this is super fast to, to you can make yourself believe this super quickly. So as long as you can understand what p and q are. So what's p? Because I said so. <laughs> okay, uh, so, right, because the dx, is, it's in a different order than you're used to. And then this guy must be, Q. So what is uh, dQ dx? Derivative of Q, Q is x. It's just 1. What is dP dy? It's 1, right? Or is it negative 1? Yeah, you got to have that negative in front, right? So what is dQ dx? minus dp dy, two, but they compensated, and I say they because I didn't invent this formula, by multiplying out front by one half, right? So if you multiply that by one half, you do in fact get an integrand from Green's theorem that's one, and so this integral must give you the area of the underlying region that C encompasses. Now, all that has to be true is that dq dx minus dp dy equals 1. So there's an infinite number of line integrals that will get you the area of the region. Here's, one, uh, here's two I like to use. Let's uh, cut off the one, let's cut out the 1 half and cut out that part. In other words, p is like 0, right? So we cut that out. And then we just have q, dq dx equals 1. Minus dp dy, that's zero. Oh, so your integrand is one, and that should work as well. So let me erase that. So another area formula that should work would be without the one half, the integral over cx dy. Because if you consider um, qx and p zero, it, it satisfies uh, uh, that dq dx minus dp dy equals one. If the integrand is one from Green's theorem, then the area of the region is one. What's another one you could get crossing out the one half and the x dy? Negative the integral of negative one. So pretend like q is zero, in other words, and then you've got another one. you've got another result, don't you? Um, no, I think it'll work out as is. Zero minus negative one. Yeah. So. Uh, Another result is A equals the integral over C of, we'll put the negative out front though, Y dx. Because of the, the subtraction in the integrand in, in Green's theorem. Okay, so I often like to use one of these formulas for finding area if I'm asked to do so using a line integral. Let's use a line integral to find the area enclosed by a circle of radius A. So this will be kind of a weird way to find the area of a circle. We know what the answer should be. What should the answer be? Pi a squared. I'm going to use the, I guess, the second formula I came up with. The area equals uh, integral over cx dy. I think that's a nice one to use. So c is our circle, right? It's, well, it's the boundary. And we're finding, of course, the area of the interior of that boundary, which is r or the area inside a circle. So what's uh, your favorite way to parameterize? Okay, it's a line, we're going the other way. We've got to evaluate a line integral. We've got to parameterize C. C is a circle of radius A. We'll center it at the origin. So what's, what's our parameterization for, um, for C? All 
Okay, so we'll take parametric equations, x equals uh, a cosine of, we'll use t as our parameter, and going across y equals a sine of t. And, and yeah, you still get a circle if you switch the cosine and sine around, but it, it won't, it, it'll be parameterized clockwise if you do that. So leave, leave, leave the cosine on the x and leave the, y, the, the sine of t attached to the y term. What uh, are your limits of integration? So what does t run from? 0 to 2 pi. OK. And then uh, I, I think we, have, we need dy, but I think we can find that along the way. So uh, let's find our area using this formula. So area is equal to the integral. You guys set it up for me. What do we get? 0 to 2 pi. OK, what goes in for x? A cosine t. Oh, but dy, what goes in for dy? A cosine t, right? You take the derivative of this guy. Let me use a different color. Derivative of this guy, dy, or the differential of this guy, you get uh, a, okay, derivative of sine of t is cosine of t, dt, don't forget the dt. And so that's what we get. A cosine t, dt. It's not so bad. You've done worse, right? Okay, so uh, what am I going to pull out front? It's going to be an a squared, right? a squared integral 0 to 2 pi of cosine squared t dt. What good old identity will we use? Power reducing. So what's the cosine squared t reduced to? All over 2. So let's break. Can I bring that? Will it disturb you if I bring that denominator out front right away? You're always disturbed. OK, then it's no big deal. And then inside will be left 1 plus cosine of 2t. Everybody buy that so far? OK. Now let's integrate. So we get uh, a squared over 2. And then what do we get when we integrate? t plus 1 half sine of 2t evaluated from? 0 to 2 pi. And I, I think you can see when you plug in 2 pi, the only thing left is what you get from plugging in t because the sine, you'll get the sine of 4 pi, 1 half sine of 4 pi. That's going to zero out, won't it? So we'll get a squared over 2 times 2 pi plus 0 minus, what happens when you plug 0 into the t and the sine? You get 0 both times. Oh, that's, that's the result we want, isn't it? You get pi a squared. So I just did that to show you a really strange way to find a formula that you've known about for a long, long time.